Well, for the last few months, we've uh, had an exhibition of drawings by Eric Parry. We've had over 80 drawings displayed in various parts of the museum. One of the things that we want to do with the exhibition programme is to invite contemporary practitioners to the museum, whether artists or architects, to create projects to situate exhibitions in these interiors and provide another kind of layer or meaning or interpretation onto what uh, Soane created. Drawing is really sort of integral to the experience of the museum. It was how Soane conceived architecture, it's how he, he imagined architectural designs might exist in a kind of broader continuum of, of ideas and of histories. And of course, walking around the museum, looking at some of the objects, so many of them are actually architectural drawings that are coexisting with works of art with architectural fragments and some of the other things that we have on display. So it is something that runs through the museum and it, it seemed to be a really kind of fascinating thing to look at in, uh, with, a, with a very tight focus in this exhibition. The idea was to focus on drawing and in drawing start with the idea of observation. Uh, that's mainly sketchbooks. They're recording moments. It can be in word, it can be in line, can be in shadow and light. The unfinished nature of everything is probably the common ground of the whole. It's a kind of simultaneous presentation of different drawings from different moments. Very few of them are actually kind of straightforward depictions of buildings, what we would usually consider to be architectural drawings. We're here in the kitchen of uh, Soane's house. The idea was to take the sketchbooks that span from 1974-75 through to very recent work and to distribute it around the theme of character. We start with people and then we move to the world of the characterization of architecture in terms of interiors all very different and juxtaposed and for me uh, lessons learned over a period of time and then to uh, a world that explores horizon really um, horizon in landscape horizon in image so Dante's levels of purgatory and then the final sort of idea about character was beyond horizon was the idea of the city skyline. So we have here sketches of Edinburgh, of Rome, of Stralsund and Cairo. The break of a smile, the difference of a silhouette, a sense of depth, all part of the makeup of the world and of cities that carry their own identity and uh, an, an, an idea of character because of the way in which the sketchbooks have been from travels as well as from places that are much more local. Yeah, it becomes like a, a kind of exercise in, in culture, cultural studies or geography, and that's, uh, that crosses boundaries. One of the kind of fascinating things about the notebooks is that there's a sense that they are quite unselfconscious. I don't think he ever really imagined they would be on display. So opening these up, uh, is, I think, an incredibly kind of generous and open uh, thing to be doing. The beauty of drawing is that there's the image, but then there's also the, the way it acts as a kind of a trace. You've got that kind of mark on the page, which is a kind of a direct translation of the draftsman's mood, sensibility at that particular moment in time. A drawing that's been, say, closed for a long period of time, one opens it, or one opens a sketchbook, it's not just the presence of the image, it's actually the evocation of the place which comes with sound and smell, heat and cool coldness, comes with all those sort of qualities that are about atmosphere. It's close to a theatricality, but it's also something that's absolutely present in this museum and something that uh, John Soane was incredibly interested in. Given the hallowed nature of this place, 
It's incredibly different from being given the white cube to work in. One has to thread the elements into the existing context. So it becomes a kind of echo in a very interesting way, a fascinating design exercise in its own right. This is a cabinet I think is very uh, interesting in the context of the crypt space in the museum. The sketchbooks here are all explorations of light and shadow and play, something that feels to me to be at the very heart of the museum. Eric designed the cases himself. They're sort of integrated into the visitor's experience uh, of the museum. A lot of our time is spent conserving spaces, restoring spaces where we need to. And the general rule is that things don't change, things aren't moved. But obviously the, the prospect of intervening in these highly resonant spaces is a really tantalising one. So it really is about striking a balance and a kind of a process of, of dialogue really with the spaces, with our uh, collections and conservation teams about what level of intervention is possible, what level of intervention is also appropriate. This is a rather cheeky intervention, substituting the breakfast table of the Sohn family in this wonderful room with its lantern allowing light into the centre and the dislocated walls. The site-specific nature of this led me to think about movement as the theme for the images you see that I've decided upon, whether it's in theatre or architectural stonework or performance. We've been witnessing people walking into spaces, seeing this object which on the one hand kind of seems sort of in keeping but also seems like it, you know, like it's, it's a kind of intervention in the museum that then acts as this kind of container or platform for objects that then uh, people are drawn to and hopefully begin to understand a little bit about where Eric's architectural sensibility emerges from and also about the relationship uh, to the, the particular spaces that these cases, these drawings are situated in um, and you know maybe even begin to think about these these kind of recurring themes recurring narratives that apply to architecture whether it's in Soane's day or whether it's being practiced today so here we are with the smallest of the cabinets with a background red that reflects the room um, but it's about listening it's about listening to those who have been very influential Dalibor Vaisley, Joseph Rickwert, Peter Carl, Richard Sennett, people who I've found to be very influential and informative. And these are notes from occasions that reflect their minds. The role of drawing in Eric's practice in forming that kind of creative sensibility is clearly uh, so important. It's work that is kind of embedded in a very rich, complex understanding of history, that it's about the city, it's about how architecture might be situated in the city as it exists and as it will ultimately change. Those are things that Soane was, was fascinated in and spent a lot of time uh, thinking about. It provides this kind of grounding from where architectural ideas ultimately emerge. Well, this is another very special place in the museum, and particularly for John Soane, who worked for George Dance, and he collected Dance's drawings and put them in this cabinet. Uh, and I've made the cabinet above, as it were, and the idea of it is that, like the drawings that uh, Soane had learnt from, that this is about precedent, the way in which a cafe in Rome is very particular to its context. The Bauhaus, a staircase in uh, General Motors headquarters in Detroit, a Ming chair, Frank Lloyd Wright, the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, or this full-size section of a capital in Sicily. Working within this building has allowed the insertion of exhibition pieces that in some cases, like the dance cabinet, seem to me to complete a story architecturally. And in others, you find parallels with Sir John Soane's own interest in history and theory. 
And so those echoes have become ever louder, actually, as I've thought about the exhibition. They weren't there as a preconceived idea, but they've become more present as time has gone on and one returns to the place to find uh, affinities that you didn't suspect in the first place might be there. So here we are with two rooms that are the heart of the exhibition. If the sketchbooks are about observation, these cabinets and framed drawings are about designing through drawing. These horizontal cabinets show first thoughts for various projects. They are about the speed of the hand that picks up a sense of the kinetic in buildings. On this wall are a series of drawings about finding a language for various buildings through drawing, and they're quite detailed. On the other side here are actually a set of drawings that describe uh, making uh, drawings in very different techniques to very close pencil work on this perspective of St. Martin in the Fields to an ink drawing using a pen nib that virtually cuts into the paper to the squid quick sketch of shadow and light in Anthony Gormley's studio to a study in pencil and crayon, uh, which is quite labored, but it's very precise about an extension to a listed building in Wiltshire, or the pen and ink wash drawings that describe the first moments of discovery of a project that was to uh, be the extension to the Hoban Museum in Bath. This drawing is of Finsbury Square, made to explain the idea of shadow and light in the facade to client and planning authority. Here we've got an early elevation study that shows the way new would be involved with the older order of architecture in Piccadilly. Scale is shown here particularly with two images. One which is a study of the bracing on a tower. It's deceptively large because this is through ten stories of the tower. And here suddenly the way in which the tower would be conceived of in the landscape of the City of London. These two drawings which were for a competition um, for the Turner uh, Museum and Gallery in Margate are in pastel and show a very different sense of colour and they are ordered so that the different elevations pick up different days of uh, times of the day. This is a drawing in pencil and crayon for a very big building that is very difficult to grasp photographically because of its scale. So the drawing gives a very good idea of its completeness. And here again elevation studies the master plan that becomes the building study, that becomes the detail study that we have next door. Here is a drawing that is interesting in a number of ways, but it was to represent the early ideas for a project which describes the materiality and ambition. It's very interesting going back to the perceptions that were the architectural idea in those early days before uh, any of the development around King's Cross had really taken place. So the ambitions that are evident in the drawings, the design thinking, becomes ultimately a reality through a long process. And that is evoked through extracts that show the finished projects in word and photograph, followed by a film that describes something of the visceral nature of building, the parts and fragments coming together into the whole, the theatre and drama of that making.